Atlanta for women's soccer action between Ohio State and Purdue. Take it away, Dan Kelly and Danielle Slayton. This beautiful soccer Sunday continues as we transition to women's coverage from Boilermaker Soccer Complex, Purdue hosting Ohio State. the Ohio State Buckeyes on the road again as coach fresh off her 200th win at Ohio State tried to move to a perfect 2-0 and in conference play but the young Boilermakers from Purdue standing in their way always good to be next to a World Cup veteran Danielle Slayton I'm Dan Kelly welcome into our conference coverage that kicked off for Ohio State on Friday inspirational come from behind win in the meantime Purdue looking for a response after their loss on Friday and Sunday is all about the grind you've got tired legs your second game in under 48 hours you've got to bring it and find that guts today factoring all of that in what is your state farm state of success for today's match well, Purdue, they're known for their resilience and grit, so they've got to bring that work rate today and finish chances when they do get in front of goal. Ohio State, they've got to recreate the width. Purdue's formation often lends itself to opening space out wide, and they've got to defend Purdue on the counterattack by transitioning to defense quickly. It might be early in the season in conference play, but both sides dealing with critical injuries positions. They'll try to persevere next. The campus of Purdue University, it's Ohio State and Purdue. Yeah, man. Soccer on VTN is brought to you by Pure Silk Moisturizing Shave Cream for Women for legs that look and feel like pure silk. Now this is some soccer weather. Beautiful Boilermakers Sporting Complex, home of the Boilermakers. The shirts looking splendid. Let's meet each team, beginning with the visitors from Columbus, Ohio, the Ohio State starting 11. That's a young spine. You look at Edwards, the freshman, and then the midfield, Waltz and Dudley, also freshman, and the keeper, Geldernick, a first-year player for head coach Lori Walker in Purdue, also a pretty young side. Well, Purdue, they're going to be playing in a 4-3-3 formation, but it might look a little bit more like a 4-4-2 with Maddie Williams dropping into that attacking center midfield field slash withdrawn forward roll. Another freshman keeper and Erica Jan between the sticks for Purdue as they stand over the ball. They lost to a quality side Penn State then ranked number eight this past Friday night 1-0. Coach Robert Clotty looks for a better start and early possession and a quick threat. That's a great first start by Purdue. And let's not forget that last year, Purdue got on the table 31 seconds into the match. And that was ended up being the final score, 1-0. It's going to be important for Ohio State to get focused very quickly and get out to a fast start. So Ohio State, Sammy Edwards, the Dublin, Ohio native. She doesn't miss much. She had her first career hat trick, 13th in program history, a little over a week ago against the University of Dayton. It's Lindsay Agnew, a big opportunity this afternoon. Medisa Wolf will heave it in. Kiramoto plays it back to the backfield, finding Kim Love there. Good news for Purdue. They have not allowed more than one goal in any of their seven games. As fans of this conference know, it's sometimes an accomplishment just to keep Penn State at one. So they're still a powerful team. And the great thing about this conference and the difficult thing about this conference is that there really is no easy game. Every single team out here can beat any other team on any given day. Oh. 
Rose, Lindsay Agnew. Dealt with carefully by Purdue. It's that aerial challenge there won by Ohio State. Looking for their first chance of this game. Perhaps rushing things a little bit, but earning the first corner of this match and never short on personality. The head coach in her 18th season for the Ohio State Buckeyes, Lori Walker. It's been a little bit inconsistent. Sometimes they can be real good this year and sometimes not so much. And that's a little bit frustrating when you're a coach. You never know which team is going to show up. But you got to give it to Lori Walker. 18th season, and look at that, 200 wins for Ohio State. That's just, it's big time. There's really no other way to put it. 212th overall, two-time Big Ten Coach of the Year. She picked up that 200th win versus George Mason. And it was an inspirational come from behind win Friday in overtime against Indiana. As Paradiso provided the game-winning goal in extra time. Playing a big role, Kayla Varner, number eight, foraging for it. But one of three keepers utilized this year by Purdue, the freshman Erica Yawn, is there to claim it. Jordan Ginther and Matty Olson also had a few spells in goal. Big congratulations to John Bloom and the Ohio State Buckeyes. The first match we saw on the airwaves this afternoon. They pick up their first regular season win over Northwestern since 2005. This is Purdue right now behind the ball. Ohio State. The gray shirts looking for some sustained possession here in the early minutes. It's Medisa Wolf searching for it. Pushing forward is Agnew. It's Wolf finding Varner. She's forced and rushed a little bit. And Ohio State doing a good job disrupting Purdue here in the midfield. As Dudley, the through ball, little back heel. Varner trying to shape it in. Wedged it wide, but really the first good try at goal for either team. Good little combination play by Ohio State here. We see him going up the middle, making some nice combinations. I would have loved to see Varner take it across her body and shoot it with her left foot. There certainly seemed to be more space to the left. Instead, she takes it across her body into Purdue defenders and can't quite get it on target. Using the width. We saw Wisconsin do that to their advantage Friday afternoon. And for new fans to the beautiful game, what do you mean when you use that term, they have to use their width? Well, you want to use the wide space of the field. So often it's easy just to try to go up the middle because that's where the goal is. But if you're able to use the width, change it from side to side, you can more easily spread apart the defense of the op opposing team, create some passing channels, and go forward in that way. It's Purdue dealing with the loss of their keeper last year, Clara Kreidler. Hadley Stewart for Ohio State, some big names. No more Megan Fuller and Danica Wu, some names we came accustomed to over the years. And not too shabby either, the record for Robert Claudy. 192 wins for the coach for Purdue. He's creeping up on 200. He's been the only coach here at Purdue. He was responsible for starting this program, building this program, and he's continued to do a very good job building some quality Boilermaker players. And a nice advantage for this young team that's dealing with injuries. There's a lot of positive energy coming from Coach Claudia's. 
Ohio State. Ashley Grunbaum, the defending there with a little support. It's Purdue off to their best start since 2009 after the little blemish in that conference opening loss to Penn State. I mean, 2009 was the last year they were in the conference tournament. The last year they were in the NCAA tournament. So I know they're looking to get back onto form and really make an effort to get into the postseason. Coach Claudie talking about all the excitement. It's this conference expanding from 10 to 12 teams. The addition of Rutgers in Maryland. Looking to earn the corner, but instead will be a goal kick here. Just over 37 minutes to go. Wearing the gray shirts, Ohio State. Looking to move to 2-0 on the season in conference play. The Boilermakers talking this week. You talk about the challenges always with, with having different keepers. A back line having to adjust. One thing I never think about is as they act as targets. How's, how's the goalie serve out the goal kicks? Where's she like to hit it? How far? It's, it's a different adjustment they were talking about, not just in the organization around the goal, but there's a lot of little facets that are involved. I really think it all boils down to, you gotta know your teammates, you gotta know your strengths, and you gotta know the areas where they're continuing to improve. So if you have a, a goalkeeper who's got a little bit of shoulder kick, shorter kick, you've gotta adjust. Purdue was 11th in the Big Ten last year, but one of their wins was versus this Ohio State team. They've had a nice little rivalry over the years. They've split the last six meetings. Hairston eyes the penalty area. Jabbed out by Grunbaum. So we look at Ohio State trying to work it up the middle. And they've got a lot of different players involved in the ball. You see Ka uh, Kayla Varna making that run straight down towards the middle. Good run, but I would have liked to see that ball played a little bit wider to a second runner. That's just a little bit too predictable for me. Lindsay Agnew, number 20. And Lindsay Agnew, she's actually been a forward and started up top for Lori Walker a few times, but moving to that outside left back position. And I love that. I, I was an outside back, so I love that position. But there have been so many forwards over the years who have been converted to that outside back position and been really dangerous attacking from the back. Hairston just running out of room as that ball was out. Lindsay Agnew better be versatile, considering who her dad is. Gary Agnew coaches Sidney Crosby in his day job, an assistant coach with the Pittsburgh Penguins, used to be with the St. Louis Blues and Columbus Blue Jackets. Freshman keeper Erica Yon starts the attack for Purdue. Slowed up a bit. The experience, Alex Hairston, dragging two defenders with her. Ripped in by Gregory. Another chance from distance, but never a threat of getting through. And Ohio State trying the quick transition. Medisa Wolf. Spirits it into the middle. It's the freshman, Sammy Edwards, number 19. Freshman of the week, thanks to that hat trick. She hasn't had a lot of touches here in the early moments. Coming back to help out the midfield, Alex Hairston causes the turnover. Purdue racing the other way, but a great recovery by Medisa Wolf. Oh, 
Ashley Grunbaum has had a few clever plays out of the back here also for Ohio State. So far, Hairston has been the biggest threat going forward for the home side, Purdue. She's got to be confident against Ohio State. She was the one who got the game winner last year, putting Purdue up 1-0 in 2013. In Ohio State, they have some scorers, but no Nichelle Prince. She's been injured all season. She scored 13 of her team's 33 goals last year. So dearly missing that offense. The Boilermakers. A little twirl there by Maddie Williams, the sophomore. Some numbers forming, and Purdue hasn't been shy about testing Geldernick from distance. Sharp-dressed man today, Coach Robert Claudie. Oh, yeah. Big game. Edwards looking for that searching ball. Uses her body to shield, but Purdue able to maneuver it out. And on the other end, we see Maddie Williams doing a good job of getting into the seam right in front of the Ohio State defenders and getting a good shot on target. Easy save, but good to keep it down low. You see Purdue, they average almost 20 shots a game, more than doubling Ohio State's average. We see why here, perhaps, in the early 15 minutes of the match. They're not shy about just letting it launch from everywhere. Sprouting up Medisa Wolf. Trying to save it. go that's the width that Ohio State needs to expose the freshman Nikki Waltz plays it forward lurking in the box is Sammy Edwards but there to cut off the pass Erica Yon so freshman against freshman the goalkeeper battle this afternoon Seems like the seam starting to open up more frequently here for Ohio State. So we mentioned last year's matchup. It was Alex Hairston. Quickest Purdue goal since 2010, just 31 seconds in. An eventual 1-0 victory for Purdue. And if I know Coach Lori Walker, she's not happy about that. And she has told her team and reminded her team of last year, and they are going to use that as momentum and fuel today. Sure, schooling her freshman of the past history. Hairston had it for a moment. Crashing in there, Molly Kiramoto. And the effort pays off. And we see this sideline battle here between Kiramoto and Agnew. Molly Kiramoto, she's, she's such a versatile player. She's played literally everywhere for Purdue. She finds herself in the defensive center midfield position today due to an injury to number 44, Casella. Ball. 
Soria top and Herbert. It's been getting forward for Purdue. Still looking for that first quality chance against Megan Geldernick. This hasn't been a high scoring Ohio State team without Nichelle Prince, but Bunker down here pretty good defensively. Just inching forward, jabbed out by Agnew. Hairston. Dishing that ball in, handled immediately by Ohio State. Now breezing on up, more numbers on the attack for the Boilermakers. Knifing the cross through. Just able to get ahead on it. As Geldernick will take her time. Well, Big Ten soccer fans, make sure to check out the BTN Soccer Report, our weekly web show hosted by Kevin Egan on BTN.com. Previews, interviews, and breakdowns of the conference's beautiful game. You can also follow on Twitter at BTN Soccer Report. Former Northwestern Wildcat Chris Ritter dropped by the set for the BTN Soccer Report this week. Always good stuff. And this is good possession by Ohio State, but they've got to continue to move the ball quickly. Purdue has dropped off a little bit, so the backs have time, and I think that's intentional. Rob Cotty talked about wanting to force Ohio State's backs, central backs, to set play. Now some room and energy. It's Mia Shiro. She's trying to lead the attack down that right side for Ohio State. Dudley forced to play it back. The road was not kind to the Buckeyes last year. Just one road win. from Agnew she finds the target there Sammy Edwards great touch by Edwards she looked like she was going to be able to turn and run onto it but even better defending and well done to read the play by number 35 Michaela Lasky good first touch right here but that is excellent team defending right there good job by the Boilermakers nice and simple they make it look easy second ball Medisa Wolf Edwards from a tough angle. Erica Yawn there to stand up. And making the clean save. Good footwork by Erica Yawn. She does a great job of getting across the face of the goal and really cutting down that angle so it's a simple save. One more look at that chance. Well, great service into the box by Marisa Wolf. Sammy Edwards does a good job to get onto it, but there's really nothing there. It's such a poor angle, and it's an easy save. Look at that footwork. Excellent. She's on her toes. She's moving her feet. Great goalkeeping right there by Erica Yan. You can see Sammy Edwards, like most goal scorers, gets excited when she gets that chance. Even a little half chance there wide that was gathered in by the freshman keeper. He's been around for a while. We mentioned the head coach for Purdue. He's embracing technology, like a lot of teams using GPS units during training and games to, to track the players, how far they run, how fast they run. 
And the midfielders are usually the busiest, aren't they, Danielle? Absolutely. Molly Kiramoto by far is well above average. Often the defender who cover the midfielder who covers the most ground for the Boilermakers. And technology, that's really the story and the new story in the women's game. I mean, the advancements in this game. <laughs> I kind of am glad that that wasn't around when I was playing because you can't cheat that way. You can't, you can't take a break because the technology doesn't lie. The coaches, they usually can figure it out themselves, but Coach Claudia's saying what it really does is it just reinforces your beliefs. And it, and it allows you to build in rest appropriately, allows people to, to recover appropriately, to make sure that you are maximizing your ability when you're out there on the field. So big corner on the Purdue corner. Katrina. Still regaining her fitness. Good service off the corner. Second ball. Blasted over the woodwork. It's Alex Hairston. Trying to put herself in a dangerous position once again. Edwards was looking for Agnew, but Alex Hairston, she's been a handful to deal with in the midfield, and Geldernick leaves her line just in time. Well read by Geldernick. She uses every inch of that 18-yard box. She was freshman of the week in late August, Megan Geldernick, always challenging playing for a former keeper and her head coach Lori Walker asked Lori if she thinks that's more of a challenge to be a keeper to play for a former keeper and she thought it could be but not with a personality like Megan Geldernick because she's got high expectations just like coach one well, Geldernick has clearly been able to step up last year there was a little bit of a, a battle for the goalkeeping position at Ohio State between Rachel Middleman and Jillian McVicker. I thought Jillian McVicker was going to get the nod, but unfortunately this summer she gets injured, so Geldernick, freshman, has to step up into this role. So thrust into the role, and so far, doing well with it. Here's Sammy Edwards. Varner trying to penetrate. Bodies down for the Boilermakers, but safely away. And Ohio State continues as they possess the ball to look up the middle of the field, and that's exactly what Purdue is trying to invite them to do. They win it then immediately and look to counterattack. Space for Hairston. Quickly closed down, finding an option on the wing. Cleaned up nicely by Ohio State, but Purdue Still ends up behind the ball. Holly Gregory working down this right side. Keep working, boss. First substitutes of the game. Checking in for Medisa Purdue Wolf. number She finds herself Nicole in the midfield Robertson. today, but she's certainly somebody who's familiar to defending. She's played center back 14. and in the central Emma part of the midfield Wangness. for Ohio State. Emma Wangness in for Ohio State. Nicole Robertson hey, Godly, off the Godly. bench for Godly. Purdue. You hear the voice of Lori Walker. Over. What do you hear out there as a player? You hear fans, you hear other players, you hear coaches, or do you sometimes try to block it all out? I think the most important thing is to pay attention to what's going on at the moment. So if that's your coach that's providing you information in a critical situation, that's what you gotta focus on. If it's a teammate at the goalkeeper behind you, you've gotta focus on what is important in that critical moment of the game. And that changes in an instantly, it's constantly adjusting. 